Um, next up is one of our relative locals, uh, your Mr. Paisley, would you like to take the stage? Yeah, okay. Sorry about having my phone out, but you know, I have really not very well prepared for this. Um, okay. I'm kind of doing two talks tonight. Um, this one is called What is the Photon? The one that's probably more interesting is Bear Bird Robots, um, and there'll be beer and taste. So. <laughs> Yay! Alright, so basically, this is the particle photon. Does anyone know what this is? It's a Apart particle from photon. You. Sorry? It's a particle photon. Has anyone seen it before? And nope. exclude all these guys? Alright. Okay, so I'm going to pass it around and then I'll talk a little bit about this. So basically my first talk's going to be with this. And I'll run over time, we'll search through, don't bother me. That's fine. I expected that. Um, so this is like a rapid prototyping device um, for the Internet of Things kind of cloud computing environment. And it's built by a company called Particle out of America, I think based out of Minnesota. Came out of Minnesota and now they're based in San Francisco. And they started this whole idea on Kickstarter. They're completely born on a Kickstarter. And they had a first product called the Spark Core. They used to be called Spark. So they had a <laughs> product called the Spark Core, which mutated into the Photon, which is their second product. And then they've just released their third product, which is the Electron. Um, I'm not gonna focus on the Electron. It's a cellular version of this device that works on the 3D network. This is a, a Wi-Fi based device, as was the Core. And basically, if you've heard of an Arduino, it's kind of like a souped up version of the Arduino. Um, so, if you look at the center of it, whenever it comes around, you'll see that it's got like a little sort of silver square module in the middle, and that's kind of the brain of the whole device. It's called the P0. And that, if anybody knows anything about microprocessors, that's an ARM Cortex M3 microcontroller. It's quite a powerful microcontroller you would find in a lot of electronics today. Um, alongside a Broadcom Wi Fi chip, I think it's Broadcom. Um, and that little tiny module kind of does all the work. The rest of what you see around that is the board itself, like the components for the RF, the UX of the LED, and the USB connectivity and the GPIO of the pins. So I'm going to give you a little overview of what you kind of things you could do with that and how you could use it, basically. So it's got 18 digital inputs and outputs. So you could connect it to digital sensors, digital pins, digital outputs, screens, that kind of thing. And it's got analog input and output pins. So you could connected to different kinds of sensors, maybe uh, you know, analog temperature sensors, analog humidity sensors, that kind of thing. So you start to see how you might be able to use it. And then it's got all the normal protocols that you would find on a normal microcontroller, like SPI, Squirt C, CAN, and USB. So you can start to see how this is a very versatile device. It can kind of be built out into lots of different products and platforms in a very fast manner. It's got full Wi-Fi, uh, GNN, so it'll fit with any Wi-Fi network that's kind of out there today. And for those of you who want to get a little bit deeper, I'll talk about it later, it's got full support for JTAG, so if you want to get right debugging on the actual microcontroller like, itself, um, you can. And it's fully open hardware and fully open software, so the company are very transparent about how it's built, the way it's built, and you can actually just build one yourself if you wanted from your own kit. So, I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about how you can use it because the one thing that I find with a Photon is that it's like you could, you, you know, someone who's comfortable with an Arduino and maybe a very, very simple level of programming could do stuff with a Photon and someone who is very, very experienced with embedded software development and wants to write C++ and get right into the nitty gritty of it can actually work with it as well. It's open to kind of all levels of technical experience. So you'll find people prototyping on it, you'll find even school kids prototyping on it on an educational level, and as we'll talk about later, you'll find people like local companies like Brewbot putting it at the core of their very platform. So there's a couple of different ways that you can work with it. Before I talk about that, it's kind of split into two. Um, if you think about it, like the code that lives on that chip as two separate things, so you've got a core firmware that is written by the company Particle that lives in the chip, it handles all of the contact with the, I, with the IOs, the inputs and outputs, the Wi-Fi stack, all of the networking is kind of taken care of, but it's completely open source for you to see and be visible with. And then also there's the application, which is what you kind of write to <coughs> compile in with that. And they give you sort of three ways that you can work with it. So the simplest and most basic way that a lot of people get started with is that they have a completely web-based development environment. So you can buy one of these for $19, it's very, very cheap. You can take it home, connect it to your Wi-Fi, claim it as your own, log into the Particle website, write a few lines of code in the browser, 
and it will send the code over the Wi-Fi network to your to your device to basically start interfacing with sensors. So you can start to see how you could like you could just you know if you have an idea for a product in any way, shape, or form, you can start to um, get involved right from the get go. So basically, you'll see later on how we integrated it with our product and how we can kind of think about integrating it in the future. But just now that I have it back, I'll just go back to that for a second. This is kind of like a pretty standard connection, so this can plug into any PCB or any sort of header that you have to connect with your sensors, or a breadboard if you want to kind of plug and play different things together. But also this little chip in the middle, the P0, they sell that as well. So you can start to see how a business could start to prototype on this and then build their own circuit boards with just this little module in the middle and just go straight from prototype to production with really complete ease of, of, um, of use. So just going back to what I was talking about before, the, you've got the web interface, so very, very simple. Anybody can just fire up the web and uh, write a few lines of code and program it. But also, as I said, if you want to get a little bit deeper like we do, you can actually pull down their, their version of the core firmware and integrate your firmware with that. Build it over Linux with, or on a Mac or on Windows with GCC and download it over USB straight to the, to the device or over the air via the Wi-Fi network. So that's how we do it, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically, this, in my eyes, is one of the best tools for prototyping a product on the market today, especially if you want internet connectivity, because you can very, very quickly hook into the cloud, because they provide you with an API to send any data to the internet with about three lines of code, if even. So you can very, very quickly start to see sensor data appearing on the web. Then if you want to program that into your own application, you can just hook that in with API calls. And it just gives you like a real, you don't have to worry about a lot of the, the nuts and bolts, a lot of the bare bones programming that you might have to hire an entire team to build because Particle have sort of built it in a way that it's so versatile that you can, you can just get straight into the actual application that you want to build. So, how we use it is we would send all of our data up to the cloud as well as send all of our data on the local network. So we kind of have two streams, one going to a mobile phone and then one going up to the cloud. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, as I say, um, I'm not going to say much more about it. If you have ever considered sort of building anything for, with, with internet connectivity, it's very, very well worth to check this out because it's very, very fast and very, very quick. And if anyone has any questions, that would be the time to ask me.